Well met, stranger. You find yourself in the presence of the renowned wizarding prodigy, Gale of Waterdeep. Please, no need to be intimidated. My virtuosic talents once caught the eye of the goddess of magic herself, Mistra, who named me her chosen and her lover. Thanks to a slight miscalculation on my part, that relationship eventually soured, as did the greatest of my powers. Now I'm merely a humble wizard on the road to redemption. Unless I can find the path to something greater. Despite your recent fall from the Nautiloid, you are miraculously unharmed. Apart from the volatile orb of Netherese magic buried within your chest, of course, it stirs softly. Soon it will hunger, and when that time comes, it must be fed. Starve it, and you risk triggering a cataclysmic explosion of raw, unfettered weave. Such an explosion will be unavoidable if the tadpole in your skull triggers ceramorphosis. An outcome definitely best avoided. That great mind is little more than a playground for a parasite right now. The tadpole must be disposed of. According to what you've read, you have but seven days to find a cure. Well, that's the end of you. Better get moving. We need each other, and we both know what's at stake. Can't think of better company. Just before we go, I wanted to thank you again for freeing me. It would have been all too easy for you to run right past my pod, but you didn't. I'll remember that. Lead the way. A mighty river. There's bound to be settlements along its shores. Four of those wretched things. Intellect of ours, a thinking man's worst nightmare. You fight well. Perhaps our survival isn't such a distant prospect. Your desire. Hurry! I've got one of those brain things cornered. There, in the grass. You can kill it, can't you? Like you killed the others? I was hoping for a kind soul. Well, not to worry. I saw you on the ship strutting about whilst I was trapped in that pot. I'm not an idiot. I saw... Ah! Your mind twists. You're looking out of unfamiliar eyes, prowling dark, busy streets. You try to hold the memory, but it fades to the worm. The light. The fear. <sighs> what was that? What's going on? The worm. Of course. That explains things, somewhat. The strong and silent type. All right. Please tell me you at least know something about these worms. Turn us into... Ha! <laughs> you know, 
I was ready to go this alone, but maybe sticking with the herd isn't such a bad idea. Find a crash. You will join me. Careful. She obviously sees your kindness as weakness. Don't let her take advantage. Come. The Horned Ones mentioned a camp. One there, this Zoru, has seen Githyanki. A crash must be near. We will ask this Zoru where he has seen my kin. You do not recognize the language on the plaque. Soon, I may just get a tad malcontent. That might be worth it. A lot of effort to hide one sarcophagus. Again, what is the worth of a single mortal life? I am curious by what standards thou shalt judge. Very well. I am satisfied. We will see each other again at the proper time and place. Farewell. But I do know that the longer thou standest here, the farther away our second meeting becomes. We haven't gone all that far yet. What are you referring to exactly? Must I? Thinking about it won't help. We know what to do, so let's do it. Someone I have to reach. As soon as possible. Thank you. And you're right. It's a delicate matter. Not something for light conversation. You're not the kind of company I'd keep willingly. But all things considered, you'll do. And... I haven't forgotten that you saved my life aboard the Nautiloid. Perhaps I'll be able to return the favor at some point. I expect I am your first. And they didn't cut you from navel to neck. Well, perhaps they were otherwise occupied. I am still getting used to people like you. I know of your kind, but I do not often encounter them. That large, fleshy nose of yours looks like a mistake. Decadent, then. Lacking in economy. Like so much of this world and its undisciplined people. What were you two talking about? 
I see. I'd be careful with Lazelle. So am I. If we're to survive, we need to trust each other. You seem reliable. I think you know how important it is that we find someone who can cure us. Best if we focus on that. Good. We might even get lucky and find one right away. As I see it, we're overdue some good fortune. Rest well. Sleep is a hazy oasis on the far side of a desert of worry. You know exactly what this illithid parasite will do to you. Within seven days, you'll become a mind flayer. But what about the bomb in your chest? Ceramorphosis is likely to destabilize it. What then? She was furious when she realized what you'd done. Seeking control, trying to prove yourself her equal. You were in love with her. Now you're a danger to everyone you know. Your mistakes have been huge. The consequences, memorable. But you won't let anyone die. You can't. You'll need to drain magical energy from a powerful artifact soon. As you contemplate your hubris, your eyelids grow heavier and heavier. Excuse me, Mr. Dakarios! Mr. Dakarios! You! Destiny is at your door. Won't you at least twitch the curtain? Well, it isn't the mother of all magic lucky for you. You look terrible. Are you eating? I won't be teased, heckled, pestered, or vexed, Mr. Dakarios. Not before I've had my due. it. No one manages the nuances quite like you. And I you, of course. The tower just isn't the same without you stomping about in the background. So here I am, come to reinsert myself. After all, remember what happened last time I let you out of sight? Of course you do. You're still paying the price with that ticking time bomb in your gullet. The indignity. Nestled amongst your books and papers, Tara bore witness to your greatest triumphs and your greatest failure. You made yourself a walking cataclysm. The annihilation brewing within you just about held at bay by your constant consumption of magical objects. Tara saw it all, but never left your side. Speaking of which, I brought you something for your tummy troubles. A ring coursing with magic. The netheries orb within you shudders, longing to consume, to devour. It must be satisfied. We have a great deal of catching up to do. Eat that, have a wash, and for the love of all that's dear, a shave. Then you can fill me in on what I've missed. Of course, Mr. Dakarios, what else are friends for? Now eat up. If you explode and kill us all, I'll be furious. you consumed has staved off the dark hunger within you. For now. Ah, 
Oh, goodness. That thing on your face is even worse than I remember. Mr. Dakarius, if you have to ask, there's no hope for you at all. Please tell me you've at least made inroads when it comes to finding someone to settle down with. Myself and Mrs. Dakarios are starting to think you intend to die alone. Naturally. After you abandoned her, there was only me left to keep her company. She's very good company, though. Ah, the stories we've traded over toast and tea. You're a highly entertaining source of speculation. But speculation only goes so far. Tell me, Mr. Dakarios, how have you been? Start at the top, then. Oh, well, that is... Hmm. How long do you have? Days? Mr. Preservus. Mr. Dakarius, Gail, you are the finest mind, the finest wizard, I have ever had the pleasure to know. If anyone can beat this thing, it is you. When you tried to control the weave, when it all went, pardon my language, belly up, I was terrified, scared you'd be hurt, scared Mistra would punish you for your transgression. But do you know what never crossed my mind? That you wouldn't figure a way out of it. My clever friend never leaves a knot knotted. This parasite is one more knot, so get to tugging threads. And, Mr. Dakarios, please. The beard. I'd cut it down myself if I could hold a razor. What is it, Mr. Dakarios? That's the spot, sir. Thanking you. More or less the same, though news of some mad faction calling themselves absolutists is starting to trickle in. I told your mother not to worry. That if they were anything to worry about, Baldur's Gate would handle things quick sharp, keep them from spreading their tendrils north. She still wants to know when she'll see you again, sir. I avoid giving any answers, but she misses you. I know that, but she doesn't. She'd keel over if she knew just how you'd try to manipulate the weave. Or maybe she'd just say something like, My Gale always was one to make the impossible possible. Oh, but she adores you. Anyhow, I'm keeping my senses pricked for any sign of another item that might be of use to you. Hopefully something will turn up soon. You focus on that parasite. I dare say turning into a mind flayer may set that bomb off as quick as anything. No time to waste. 